Hi, I'm Antonio Sale, and in this video we are going to illustrate as a motivational example to Bayesian optimization the implicitly available information on where the global minimum is in a Gaussian process. And we'll quickly review basic formulas and code to carry out such exercise. So the basic idea is that we have a Gaussian process with some prior mean function in black and let's say 95% confidence interval in red plus minus 1.96 standard deviations and then a Gaussian process is a way to encode random functions such as the ones in grayish, blue, pink, etc. lines we see here. Of course, if we repeat throwing the dice, we get different random functions, of course. We'll review the code in a minute on how these things were obtained, but the idea in these motivational videos is getting the basic understanding on what is all this about. In here, well, basically, the optimal will be, you know, around here, you know, but in actual experimental optimization, our true ground truth function is one of those, and we progressively increase our information on which one is it as we gather experimental samples. So if we measured these points at three different abscissa values, then from all the random functions in this family, we need to select only the ones that pass through the measurement points. Or, well, maybe if I have some measurement noise, the ones that pass in a band of plus minus two standard deviations of the measurement noise. So computing that is called computing the posterior. This is the posterior mean in blue and confidence interval 95% in red. So all of them pass through the black stars and throwing the dice, we can get some realizations like the ones we see here, or, you know, we can throw dice again and get different realizations, of course. The overall goal of all this is that as we want to use Gaussian processes as a tool for optimization, then the important thing will be the position of the minimum. But before delving into that, we'll just review the code to generate this plot we are actually seeing. So Gaussian processes are based on a so-called covariance kernel that tells me the covariance between two points. And I just wrote this function in which I have this component that tells me somehow a distance dependent covariance. SG is a sort of correlation distance parameter to tell me how separated my x2 and x1 must be so that they are independent from one another. And then I have this constant variance, which amounts to sort of uncertainty on my mean value with standard deviation of 0.9. And my mean value will be this prior mean function in the prediction stuff that does not appear in covariance computations because covariance works in incremental coordinates with respect to the mean, so mean is not necessary. When discussing this covariance kernel, and if I have a vector of points in x1 and another vector of points in x2, then evaluating the covariance kernel for all pairs of points will give me a covariance matrix, Km, that I will use in the prediction as follows. My prediction will be driven by the innovation, the difference between what I observe, data dot y, and the mean prediction, this prior mean function evaluated at my x points, and then that innovation will be multiplied by an observer gain, let's say, that will compute the increments with respect to the prior mean of the posterior estimation. That gain is covariance between measurements 
and information, data.x are the measurements, divided or multiplied by the inverse covariance matrix of the information, which is, well, the covariance between capital X and capital X, which are the measurements, plus some diagonal matrix re representing measurement noise with standard deviation 0.015 in this particular example. Last, this line computes the prior variance at the test points x1 and this line encodes the variance reduction due to the available measurement information. And okay, this algorithm is named Gaussian process regression. We are just summarizing the code in a quick way, but you should look elsewhere for a detailed explanation on how and why these formulas are the ones you are seeing on screen. This last line is just in case we have numerical round-off issues or whatever, but conceptually this should not be here. And in fact, if you comment out, the code will work equally well. Well, the thing is that this is Gaussian process regression, and then it returns the posterior mean and posterior covariance matrix of points in X1, given this data and of course this prior mean and this covariance kernel. Good, so with empty data we can predict our prior in 201 points, so covariance matrix is, you know, a very big one, diagonal of covariance, and mean plus minus two standard deviations roughly gets me the 95% confidence interval and these lines just throw four times the dice to get me four random functions. Discretized at 201 points because continuous infinite number of points cannot be computed with a computer, of course. The rest of stuff here is just cosmetic plotting colors line widths. You can pause or don't know the code, but it is not important at all. So the above code was the one that was used to plot this mean confidence interval and these four lines there. And the exact same code, but with this non-empty data, which I measured, is used to predict mean and variance of the posterior and same confidence intervals and the same multivariable normal random code to plot four different posterior trials and same cosmetic plot label etc code. So these plots, these kind of posteriors in which all of them pass through the black stars representing measurements plus minus a little of uncertainty given measurement noise and of course I can execute again and get different realizations. The thing is that we want to use this Gaussian process stuff as a tool for optimization. We wish, for instance, to undergo minimization. Then the important thing is where these lines have the global minimum. Then, for instance, this greenish one has the minimum here. The cyan one has the minimum here. And these two purple ones have the global minimum here and here. And the mean has the global minimum here. So, well, it's this dot I just drew. The actual information encoded in the Gaussian process, which is relevant for finding the global optimum of this family of random functions that pass through these measurement points. Depending on this information, I will use it to decide my next experiment. So Bayesian optimization is another name for, let's say, experiment design. If I drilled three holes taking rock samples to look for iron ore, I will use this statistical model to decide which will be the next point to drill looking for that iron minerals. So. 
how can we do this instead of four times, four thousand times? Well, just telling MATLAB to do instead of four trials, four thousand or whatever number you wish. But you know, the more trials, the longer it will take, of course. So if I take six thousand trials, then I get six thousand samples of functions evaluated at 201 points in the abscess. So these realizations have 6,000 rows, each one for one of the functions, and the function values at the, abscess, at the 201 abscess points are in each of the elements on, of the rows. So this line computes the minimum of each row and stores the position at xmn and the actual minimum value at fval. The rest is pure cosmetic plotting code. So the result, let us first try just with 60 to see that it works and then 6000 times. So here we have 60 bluish lines and the green dot at each of the global minimum of the 60 lines. So then if I carry out 6000 repetitions, here we have the cloud of green dots, which indicate where the minimum of all the realizations of this Gaussian process may be. Each realization has one green dot. Of course, the number of minimums and how it goes up and down is encoded in the smoothness of the covariance kernel, the correlation distance, etc. The thing is that, well, if I want to carry out optimization, this cloud of green points may be used to guide my next decision. Say it seems that it's in this region where most of the green dots density, let's say, will be. In fact, okay, let us compute histograms. So if I project the abscissa coordinate of the 6000 points, I get the marginal histogram of the input location. So most of the random functions have a minimum around abscissa equal to one. And I can also carry out a histogram of the output values, this blue histogram. And well, you know, the red thing is just a smoothed histogram for cosmetic reasons, but okay, the most of the optimal values are in this range, let's say, between minus 0.4 and plus 0.4. In this figure, I have drawn the posterior mean and in black confidence intervals in red, the clouds of points with the global minimum and the marginal abscissa histograms down here. A few samples have a minimum at the left, but most of the minima are at the right. And also in now cyan color, I have plotted in the left margin the histogram smoothed one of the actual function values. So the thing is that if these probabilities were very narrow, then I would have had enough information to locate the optimal. If they are too wide, then I would need to sample new experimental points. And maybe, you know, I would decide to sample here to see whether I get a very good score by sampling at that point in which the likelihood of having a global minimum is larger. Let us have a quick look at the code. The input histogram is just counting how many minima are at a particular point and dividing by the sum to get, you know, something that adds one. But we can do the same in one line if in MATLAB using this histogram counts command. And in order to get the smoothed histogram, I use this KS density, which applies an algorithm called kernel density estimation, 
that should not be confused with the covariance kernels we are using in the Gaussian process computations. So, you know, forget this kernel and k here, just think that there is a MATLAB command to get a smoothed histogram whose inner workings I am not wishing to discuss. Then, with suitable cosmetic plot, I can plot this vertical value histogram, this horizontal marginal histogram, and of course, in fact, the cloud of green dots is two-dimensional, so I may plot the joint to the histogram by feeding the ks density command both the abscissa points where minimum are achieved and the actual values so I get this to the histogram that okay more or less can be interpreted as a joint probability density function telling me both information on where the optimum is and which is its actual ordinate value. So we can see that, yeah, most of the times the minimum is at the right hand side, sort of this perspective will be the marginal we obtained of x1. Well, not exactly the perspective because the marginal is the integral, the sum over every possible function value, of course, or well, the sum in this direction will get me the function value marginal, remember some, not projection as we are seeing here, but okay, this is just how to understand intuitively what we are watching. And then this is the most informative, from a probabilistic sense, depiction of the information about where the minimum is and what its value is. So at the end, using this or the marginals, is the information the Gaussian process encode for optimization and this should guide my decision. However, you know, throwing the dice 6,000 times I was able to do this because input is one-dimensional but these 200 points in the input I was discretizing if input were bidimensional there would have been 200 squared, 40,000 and 3D, 4D, we, this would just exponentially explode. So what I have told here should be understood only as a motivation on the usefulness of Gaussian processes for optimization. This code does not readily scale up to higher dimensions. So, you know, that's why people write papers on it, on how to approximate this for five decision variables, let's say. The thing is that this should guide my decision, but again, this throw the dice is too complex. And then there are other heuristics called acquisition functions that somehow summarize important aspects of this information to be used to decide where the next sample should be taken. But of course, details on all that stuff will be left for forthcoming videos for brevity. So we end the video here. Thanks for watching.